very often when we're out fishing, it can be very baffling as to just which soft bait we should use. And to be honest, there are always going to be a lot of exceptions to this. Uh, there are some, uh, I've found some patterns, but you never know what's going to happen. So uh, fish, of course, are just not going to go and turn down a meal. And especially a snapper, which is really um, a scavenger as well as a predator. What I tend to do is first thing in the morning, I'm either going to go quite natural or I'm going to go with something very bright. If I've got dull conditions and I've got rather murky water, you really can't beat having something that's bright. These bruised bananas in different sizes, they're all good options. Same with the nuked chicken low. So any of those, they work really well. Um, and just different size, just depends on where you're fishing as to which ones go, go best. But yeah, that'd, that'd be my go-tos to start with. Another one that uh, is, is quite bright, that can be either all on or all off, is this um, pink and pearl one called Coconut Ice. I really like it um, in the deeper waters. We're talking about, say, 15 metres to about 30 metres. Works very, very well. And whether you're after big fish or whether you just want to create a lot of disturbance with that paddle tail, you just choose which one's going to be the option there. There are also days where there may be quite a lot of squid and I'm always going to go for a rather brownish coloured lure. It could be our bruised banana again, but just as importantly, these fellas here, mostly new penny in various sizes. We've also got some little ones and the, even the little shrimp there, um, especially when they're fishing slow with all those bits dangling down, they can go really well. But these little fellas here, we've got Houdini, we've got Redbone, they're all very squiddy type things and really all the snapper are looking for is something that's around that sort of colour that's being worked and jiggled back like a, like a squid and we can do really well on those and it's just up to us to choose the size that's going to suit the size of the snapper that we think is probably going to be there. I love fishing bait fish imitations. What I find is that it's once again just down to the size of the fish you hope to catch. So if you're fishing the far north, you're fishing Little Barrier, if you're fishing Flat Rock, if you're fishing any place that's got some decent fish and you'd like that chance of a big fish, then these bait fish imitations work really well. We've got Smoky Shad, we've got Nuked Pilchard, and uh, to me they're very hard to beat. They're always a, a consistent performer and of course in different sizes. This Bad Shad, I love that. Whenever there's good workups, that's one of the ones I'm going to be using along with these ones here. This is the Shiner, been another very good um, performer over the years. Smaller new pilchers and paddle tails. Once again, just with that extra amount of disturbance as it goes down, wriggling that tail. And of course, going right the way down to these little fellas when you're after uh, fish in the uh, anchovy workups, whether it's that little Shiner or whether it's um, in the mood ring. And, um, even this four inch paddler here, which is Joe Dennehy's favourite from Top Catch here, the opening night. And Pearl, of course, Pearl works really well. Finally, just if in doubt, either you use those, bright, uh, those bruised bananas before, or this motor oil, that's got to be the other colour that just so often brings home the bacon. I don't know why it works. It seems to work really well down to about 20, 25 metres. Then after that, I think that it's actually better to have a nuked pilchard or um, a uh, coconut ice, something with a bit of luminosity in it, maybe even the um, red bone. Red bone's another good one to have deep down because of that luminous aspect. Um, or even the, um, the nuked pilchard, uh, sorry, nuked chicken as well. So those there, shallow water, all sorts of conditions, generally pretty good, but as I say, nothing's perfect, and that's why I have so many different types, because you never know what's going to happen on the day. So, unfortunately, it means that although these last a zillion fish before they get uh, ruined, in fact, um, going through these, I found a lot of them were very second-hand. They've been obviously munched by a lot of fish before. You will have them for a long time, but you do need to, uh, first of all, have variety and colours and shapes to suit whatever the circumstances are and you will need to have some secret sauce. Without it, it's probably about half as good as it can be, and in some situations, it makes all the difference in the world. Good fishing.